Welcome, dear viewers, today we will show you a beautiful story from Arab history. But before we start, do not forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell button so that you can receive all new. The story of Al Zir Salem is considered one of the most beautiful and wonderful stories transmitted by the Arabs throughout history. You may know that the Arabs transmitted a lot of news and days, and immortalized the names of many poets, sages and knights of that time. The character of Al Zir Salem was one of these characters that bewildered people, and there were many fallacies in it until it became as if it was a character of imagination and delusions. Its owner is a legendary hero who does not break dust, and a stallion poet for whom the poems are preserved. He was the first to intend poems, and the first to disbelieve and degrade poetry. His lamentation and weeping moved tribal norms, and he played on the strings of ignorance, killing an entire tribe, and wiping it out from the ground. He is shameless and playful. Yes, he is al Zir Salem, whose name the researchers differed, so it was said Salem and it was said Uday. So he is Uday bin Rabia bin al-Harith bin Zuhair bin Jashim bin Bakr bin Habib bin Amr bin Ghanim bin Taglib bin Wail. The different titles of al Zir Salem. The title of al Zir Salem with more than one title, the title of the Minister of Women. He was also called al Muhalal and nicknamed Abi Layli. He was called a slacker because he was wearing loose clothes. It is also said that he was called flabby because he humiliated poetry. He called father of Layla, because of a vision he saw when he was young. He saw himself having a girl named Layla, who would have a great deal, so when he had a girl, he named her Layla, and her husband Kultham bin Malik, and she gave birth to Amr bin Kultham bin Malik. The owner of a famous Arabic poem, The events before the story of al Zir Salem. He lived in the south of the Arabian Peninsula, and the tribes at that time were at war with each other, except for the Bakr and Taglib tribes. They were known for understanding, valor and courage. And the course of the events of the story of al Zir Salem began when Rabia, father of al Zir Salem, raided the Kindian king and defeated him in a battle called al Salah. So the Kindi king sought the help of the Yemeni king, and Kindia was an ancient kingdom in the Arabian Peninsula. So the Yemeni king sent an army that captured Rabia father al Zir Salem and then killed him by hanging. The tribes were afraid of the king's tyranny and obeyed his command and declared obedience to him. The Arabian Peninsula returned to his control, and the page of Rabia was turned. That ruling king, to open the page for taking revenge for his two sons, while and Minister Salem, except that they were young at that time. Days followed, and while increased in strength, courage, and valor, until he became a knight who could not break his dust. As for al Zir Salem, he was a large-bodied boy, a brave knight, but he was inclined to fun, women, and wine, except in times of hardship. The trick to recover al Galila, the daughter of Mara from the Yamani king Wail had a role in taking revenge for his father and recovering the venerable, the cousin of al Zir Salem, from the Yamani king. The beauty and perfection of this girl, the good qualities, the eloquence and the spontaneity have reached him. So his minister, Nabin, sent a message to her father once, in which he delivered a sermon lined with threats and intimidation, so he would either marry him off to his daughter, or declare war on his tribe. The old man Mara had no choice but to stop the bloodshed, pay the calamity, and agree to this offer with a radiant face. Hiding in his bed a deep sadness and acknowledgement of a sacrifice that will haunt him forever, how not when he gave his word to his nephew and it was only for him to summon Wael and tell him what happened, and that he wished to die and be buried under the soil, and not to be in this humiliation, and to obey the order of this cowardly tyrant.
So Wael went to a soothsayer to see what he was doing, so the soothsayer said to him. Is there no way except for the trick that they prepare the equipment boxes, put in them the distinguished knights, and set out on the journey to the Yemeni follower? And Wael disguises himself and makes himself Joker, and this is what happened. And when he entered the king bedchamber he introduced the king himself and took his sword out of its scabbard, stabbed the king in his chest. And returned to their homes with al Gulila and married her, and became a king who was feared in their speculations. The power of Wile has become unbearable. However, the joy was not complete. His power has increased to an unbearable degree. So he prevented the neighborhood, kindled the fire, became the protector of the fever, and prevented hunting in the desert, until the torrent reached the stubble. Joss's was the brother to Wile's wife and he was one of the best knights, with a reputation and honor among the Arabs, except that his disdain took away from him every outlet. And an indiscretion ran through his veins that did not leave the dream an outlet, and whenever the fire of his hatred was extinguished, Wile returned and set it on fire with his action. Until one day Wile entered to his wife's bedchamber and asked her a question that was like the straw that broke the camel's back. He asked her, Who is dearest Wile? And Wile here means the tribe of Tagli, the tribe of Wile, and the tribe of Bakr, the tribe of his wife and his cousins she did not answer him until he repeated the question to her many times. And she answered after his insistence on her, my brothers Hamam and Jossas. During that period, Suad bint Munchith al Tamimiya, the aunt of Jossas, who was called al Basis, lived with them and owned a camel so she sent her camel with Jossas's camels to graze in Wiles' fever, and Wile only allowed his kinsmen's camels to enter this fever. So when Wile saw her camel, he told Jossas to don't bring this camel to his fever again. But Jossas said, no camel grazes pasture except with this camel. After this provocative dialogue, Wile returned to his home and asked his wife, do you see that there is a man among the Arabs who prevents his neighbor from me? So she was silent, so he repeated it a second and a third time, and she said, yes, my brother Jossas, and his relatives are his cousin Amr bin al-Harith. So he mentioned to her what happened between him and her brother, so she implored him not to sever his ties of kinship, and so she did with Jossas to ward off problems. Murrah and his children tied the camel so that she would not return the water, so when Wiles' camels passed by, she untied the leash and followed the camels, so when Wiles saw her camel, he throw her udder, so her milk mixed with her blood, and when al Basis heard about her camel's death she screamed and said what a shame. How shameful how while kills your guest camel while you are silent. Jossus said to her. Shut up, for I will kill a camel greater than your camel. In the meantime, al Basis was weaving nets of deceit and deceit to achieve its goals by killing while, so she took the incursion into Jossus's chest with grudges. As for Salem, his position was one of wisdom and deliberation at the time, and he wanted to reduce the intensity of Wiles' anger. So he asked him to calm things down with his cousins in order to preserve the kinship, so it was only from Wile that, he said to him. You are only chasing women, and by God, if I were killed, you would only take milk by my blood. And the grudges continued to increase little by little until, on that fateful day, women went out to the water resources, and they were accompanied, as usual, by the best knights to protect them from a sudden raid in which the women were taken as captives. And among the knights was Jossas. So they wanted to get water from Shabeth, so Wael caught up with them and prevented them. So they went to the water of Al-Az, and he prevented them. So they reached the water of the Sins, so he prevented them. Jossus said, You expelled our people until you almost killed them with thirst. And Wile answered, We did not prevent them from water except that we were preoccupied with it. Jossus said, 
This is like what you did to my aunt's camel al basis. Weil said. I mentioned it. If I found it in a herd other than yours, I would have killed them all, you want to stop me from protecting my land, you idiot. Sajasis so sympathized with his horse and stabbed him. Weil asked Jasis while he was in death throes for a drink of water, but he did not respond to him. So he requested the same request from Amr bin al-Harith, but he did not respond to him, but rather finished him off. Jasis returned home revealing his knees. When his father Mara saw him in this condition, he said by God his knees did not come out, except for a great matter, so he asked him, what is behind you, my son? Jasus said, Behind me, I stabbed stabbed to be preoccupied by the elders of Wyal for a long time. The father asked him again, Did you kill Wyal? He said, Yes. Samara so said, I wish you and your brothers had died before this. The position of Hamam, Jasus's brother, and al zir Salem, regarding the killing of Wael. And while Hamam, the brother of Jasus, and Salem were busy with the maidservants, drinking wine in the wilderness, as a maidservant on horseback whispered to Hamam what had happened, and told him that his father had sent the horse with her, so that Hamam would flee with her, fearing the wrath of Zer Salem. al zir sensed something strange, so he made him swear by the covenant between them that he would believe what he said and not keep it a secret, so he told him that Ajasis had killed Wael. So al zir underestimated the matter and said, Forget this, your brother is weaker than that. But Hamam stopped drinking and slipped out of the al zir council to return to his family and learn the truth of the matter, it was a catastrophe that Hamam and none of the people expected. The course of al zir Salem's story changed after the killing of his brother Wael. As for Salem, after he finished drinking, he returned to his clubs, drunk and staggering. He was surprised by the two conquerors. They are between weeping and complaining, grieving over the murdered and amazed at the murderer, revolting against his king, sterilizing his horses and breaking his spear. Then he said to them, you have gone to an evil doctrine. Do you sterilize your horses when you need them? And you broke your weapon when you parted with him. And he said to the women, Save for weeping eyes that weep forever. And he buried his brother, and he stayed for a while crying over him, and with lengthy poems lamenting him, and threatening the Bakris until his people despaired of him and accused him of being talkative and not effective and they said that Wael was right in describing Salem. Mara and his sons returned to the fever after they secured his anger, and when he that reached Salem, he paid attention to war, roll up his arms, gather the limbs of his people, then cut his hair, shorten his clothes, and swear that he will not care about distraction, nor smell good, nor drink wine, nor anoint himself with oil until he kills for every member of Wiles' body a man from Bakr. And when the women of the neighborhood gathered for Wiles' funeral, they asked his sister to deport Al-Jalila. Because in her standing there is gloating and disgraceful. Wiles' sister said to Al-Jalila, Oh, this one, get out of our funeral, for you are the sister of our enemy. So Al-Jalila went out, and her family received her and she lived with them for the rest of her life, finding what her family faced from the pain of battles, and the son of Wael Hagras was in her guts. Attempts to stop Zir Salem's revenge for his brother Wael. As for Al Zir, he was burning with pain and vowed to kill all the Bakris. So his people gathered and wanted to reconcile between him and his cousins. They said to him, We see that you should not hasten the war. They said, you must let us discuss the matter, so that we may find a solution that will keep the specter of war away from us and them. So Salem allowed them to discuss the matter even though he had made his decision to go to war in his heart. So a group of the notables of Taglib set out until they came to Mura and said to him, 
you have committed a great matter by killing the king with a handful of camels and severing the ties of kinship, and we do not want to rush you into war. And we present to you one of three things in which you have a way out, and in which we have satisfaction. Either you send Jossus to us, and we kill him with our friend, and we achieve justice with that, or you give us Hammam, because he is an equal to while, or you present yourself to us, and we kill you. And we are satisfied with it. So he was silent for a while, and he stopped answering. Bakr's chief said to him, speak without being disappointed. He said, as for Jossus, he is a young boy of recent age who rode his head, so he fled when he was afraid, and I do not know which country entailed him. As for Hammam, he is the father of ten and the brother of ten, and tomorrow his sons will shout at me and say, you delivered our father for the crime of someone else. As for me, I am not in a hurry to die, but do you accept one of my other sons to kill him by your wile, otherwise? You will have a thousand camels that you will be guaranteed by a baker. So they got angry and said, We did not come to you so that you would humiliate your sons for us, nor for you to give us milk. So this is how a war began between al zir Salem and the Bakr tribes. A war between al zir Salem and the Bakr tribes. So the ill-fated meeting ended and a long-term war began in which the Bakr tribes were divided between supporters and opponents. Al-Harith ibn Abd, who was one of the most powerful knights of that time, retired from the war and said his famous saying, which later became a popular proverb among the Arabs. This is a war which I have no camel in. As for the Taglib tribe, the tribes of Nimr bin Khazit joined Taglib and the war began. Al Zir Salem started the war and went on killing the Bakris until he almost annihilated them. His war with the Bakris consisted of several major battles, as it was not a continuous war. It was a war filled with hatred, as any meeting between Taglibi and Bakri turned into an armed confrontation. The most prominent of the battles of Al Zir Salem with the Bakris. The Battle of the Day of the Tales. In this battle, Hammam bin Murrah, the brother of Jossas, was killed. Hammam was a friend of al zir Salem before the start of the war, but the war turned them into two opponents on the battlefield. The Battle of Oneza. In it, many Bakris were killed, and it is said that Jossas was killed on that day. And it was mentioned in another narration that, he died as a result of a wound he sustained from a stray arrow, when the confrontation took place between him and Abu Nuwayra. So Abu Nuwayra and ten of the men who were with him were killed, and Jossas was wounded, so he fled to his maternal uncles in the Levant, and there he died. There were other battles such as the day of al waradat and the day of al Qasibat. The war lasted for many years, during which al zir Salem killed many Bakris, so that the Bakris were resorting to tricks to end this war that almost annihilated them. Therefore, some of Bakr's chiefs went to Al-Harith bin Abd, asking him to mediate to stop this war, as Al-Harith was retiring from the war. Therefore, Al-Harith bin Abd sent a delegation to al zir Salem, including his son Bahir, and with them a letter saying, You have killed many Bakris, and you have reached your revenge, and this is my son Bahir, either you kill him with wile, or you set him free and reconcile with the Bakris. Salem got angry and said, this lowly one is in place of wile. He then unsheathed his sword and wanted to kill him. Imru, al Qais said to him, do not do that, for by God, a man of the mightiest men of Taglib will be killed by him. So Salem refused but to kill him, so he stabbed him with a spear and said, Rather, you are in the place of wild soul. And when the news reached Al-Harith, and he was one of the most daring and most courageous people of his time, he said, Doesn't it console us that he was killed to reconcile between the Bakris and the Taglibis? So Salem sent, but I killed him with the blade of wild shoe. Al-Harith got angry and called for his mare, which was called Al-Naama, 
so he cut off its forelock and flank its tail. Thus, Al-Harith bin Abd, along with his tribe, joined the war in the ranks of the Bakris. His entry into the war was the beginning of the end of the story of Al-Zir Salem. The End of the Story of Zir Salem As for the end of Salem, it began with Al-Harith bin Abd when he captured him, but due to his poor eyesight, he did not recognize him, so he said to him, Guide me to Salem, he said. I have my blood, and he said, You have your blood, and he said, I have your covenant and the covenant of your father, so he said, Yes, you have that. He said, I am Al-Zir Salem, I deceived you about myself, and war is a deception. Al-Harith said, Reward me for what I did for you after your offense, and guide me to a match for Bahir, he said. I do not know him except Imru, Al-Qais ibn Aban, the chief of his people, and the valiant knight is that. So Al-Harith mowed the forelock of Al-Zir Salem, then he pulled on Ibn Aban and killed him, and Salem continued to incite his people to take revenge. But he was no longer that brave knight who leads the army. The tribes had been exhausted by war, so a reconciliation was established between the two tribes. But Salem nullified it when he raided Qais bin Thalaba, and Amr bin Malik defeated him, so he captured him and did him good. As he singled out for him a house in which he receives his visitors and feasts for them as if he was with his family. One day, a Christian gave him a bottle of wine, and when he got drunk, he said verses of poetry about the wife of Omar ibn Malik. When Alf, the chief of Qais bin Thalaba, heard this, he became angry and swore that Salem would not taste a drop of water until his camel drank water. And Alf's camel did not drink water except on the seventh day. Some of his people said to him, How bad you swore, you killed Salem, and until he drank his camel, Salem died of thirst. And this is the closest novel of his death. This is the end of the hero Al Zer Salem, who spent his life seeking revenge and collecting skulls, until death became like life for him and he forgot all pleasures, and lost every relative or far that was with him at the same time. And by his death his revenge pages has turned.